All right, what is going on, fellas? Uh, we're doing another little exercise tutorial, and if not a tutorial, just me explaining the way I like to do something. Uh, today, we are going to be doing lat pull downs, specifically the way I like to execute lat pull downs as an auxiliary bench pressing motion, right? So, very important to get that caveat out of the way right off the bat, right? I am not claiming this is mechanically the best way to train your lats, as it likely is not. I am specifically saying I like to execute them in this way uh, as an auxiliary motion to help in the development of my bench press. So much like we did with the tricep press down video, we're gonna start with a little bit of context. Why would we be doing pull downs, right? If you go back far enough in lifting history, uh, people used to claim that the lats were a primary mover in the bench press because when you had a bench shirt on, you had to row it into yourself or uh, that lats would directly contribute to power off the chest. This is not true. The lats are not a primary mover of the bench press. That being said, uh, I think we can all kind of get on board with the generalized statement, getting your back tight matters. Back tightness is good, right? Once we all can kind of get to that agreement, uh, I and many people find that like hypertrophying our upper back, getting bigger upper back muscles makes it much easier to get our upper back tight and keep it tight. So it's not that the upper back is moving the bench press, it's that bigger, stronger upper back muscles are easier to keep tight and keeping a tight upper back in some capacity is likely good for our bench press. So we have these initial statements out of the way. And some of you are probably thinking about the lot of, there's a lot of recent discussion that's been going on about, oh, is cueing scapular retraction and depression bad, especially that retraction what about scapula humeral rhythm? Doesn't the scapula need to move with the humerus? Or are we gonna have a shoulder impingement by cueing retraction? Do we need to think about protracting during our press? Yada, yada, yada. And a couple of people, by a couple, I mean, actually a reasonable number have asked me for my thoughts on this, or is cueing retraction bad? Uh, and no, cueing retraction is not inherently bad because when we're appraising a cue, we don't look to what the cue uh, would equate to if we were robots. We look at what the cue does in practical application. So using myself as a very simple example, when I cue on my bench press, which I do, maximal retraction and depression, uh, it's not a bad cue because if you watch me bench press, I do not achieve maximum scapular retraction across the rep. It is somewhat variable. So there is some level of scapular humeral rhythm going on. So what I'm cueing is not the same thing as what I'm doing. And because what I'm doing ends up looking good, we would then call that a good cue. Some people will say, oh, chest up is a bad cue because it'll lead to squatting extension. But if you give some people that cue, it has nothing but a positive result. They just tighten up their upper back, their squats look better. Uh, you could give another person that same cue and they end up squatting extension. So, so for them, it was a bad cue. So we're not making blanket statements that cueing retraction in the bench press is a bad cue. Tons of people have success with it. Some people end up executing that too literally to such an extreme that there's no variability in the retraction. The part where there is very little to no debate is no one is debating that you should be depressing your shafts, or at least I haven't found them if somebody is arguing that. So, uh, and if we were likely to put these things in a hierarchy, I think many smart people would place scapular depression in a priority above scapular retraction. So when we're looking to do some auxiliary motions and build up those upper back tightening muscles, uh, I like to use a lat pull down rather than a chest supported row a lot of the time because it's going to prioritize scapular depression over scapular retraction because I find it to be a more relevant quality uh, in assisting my bench press. Even though the row is the visibly antagonistic motion to the bench press, I find that lat pull downs fit in really well. It's not to say that rows aren't a great antagonistic uh, upper back builder for your bench press. I really just like throwing in lat pull downs. And I'll just walk you guys very briefly through how I like to do them with this in mind. So I like to use either a straight bar or these long bars with the bend at the end to take the widest straight grip I can. I like gripping on a straight bar because I think there can be some proprioceptive benefit to the same hand positioning we're going to be using on the bench. Uh, at the top of every rep, I'm a big believer in letting the scaps come upward, really reaching upward, kind of getting a full stretch, training the shoulder joint through a maximal range of motion, uh, and just developing strength in these ranges of motion that aren't necessarily relevant to the bench press. I find it to be a good habit for keeping your shoulders strong and healthy is if we can uh, get our shoulders strong in a wide variety of loading patterns and positions, they tend not to hurt. So at the top of each rep, stretch up, 
I initiate by leaning my torso back a little bit. Uh, I think that specifically with our goals in mind, you're going to be able to get into more relevant positions with a slight backwards lean, not really using that for a ton of momentum, but we're gonna initiate by going from the stretch to going to a lean without the use of a ton of momentum. We're controlled pulling into this lean. I think about pulling my scaps back and down at the same time I do that, I'm digging my elbows back and down. Instead of pulling my hands, I'm pulling my elbows because the lats act on the humerus. They do not act on the forearm. So we're gonna think about, okay, we reach, we come back to this angle, we fix this angle, we kind of lock it in. We don't have to go with like full on sheet reps and we don't have to go with this full on, it doesn't count if you have any momentum at all, you have to stay stock straight up and down. I find that will not train the musculature we're looking to train. So we initiate, with a pull, we dig the elbow deep, we're thinking scaps back and down hard, and then instead of then using that momentum and letting our chest cave away and finishing the rep with our biceps, we're going to train that motor skill of drawing the chest upward to meet the bar halfway, which is the same cue that I like to cue on the bench press. We want to try to meet that bar halfway as we tighten up our back. So we're using this to train a very specific motor skill that we also want to see in our bench press. So really quick, what that looks like is just full stretch at the top, initiate by driving the elbows kind of back and behind us, scaps back and down, and pulling the chest up. So I find that if I do these before I bench, and I practice that idea of meeting the bar halfway against resistance, when I go to do that with a barbell, I do a better job executing it. I find it builds up the musculature associated with that cue better, uh, and I find that this sets me up for a lot of success in my bench press. This is just how I like to do it, so that's my caveat, and I'm not training, claiming this is mechanically the best way to train the lats. Thank you for watching.